that tire leans out with the camber. And if it starts rubbing on the sidewall, that tire, it doesn't last long. We've seen it a couple of times already this year. I think we saw it with Jimmy Johnson last week at Richmond. But you know, Mike, you mentioned that 31 car of Jeff Burton. We watched him yesterday. Of course, he's won twice here as he goes by Vickers or works on Vickers. This will be for the fourth spot. He's like Mark Martin. He understands how you run this race in this racetrack. Also on the restart, back at 17th place, there was contact between Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88 and Martin Truex in the Napa car. Oh, Paul Menard goes for a spin, turn two, and down the back straightaway. Caution, number three. Now that all cre that was created by a bottle, by a chain reaction. A couple of cars got up there in front of Menard. He slowed down. He got run over. He was running back in the 26th position. No He's damage. Tires down. Watch that bright yellow, number 98. Up here's where this starts. So the 98, or uh, the 43 and the 78 make a little contact. Now you see here's the, the 77, a Hornish. And when Paul Menard in the 98 tried to stay off of him, he got spun out. Yeah, Tony Stewart in the 14, it just started stacking up, gets into the back of him. So much contact, it's hard to show it all. Let's let's go back to what we were going to show you. Watch the amp and the Napa car. Bam. Wow. That's Martin Truex trying to stay away from A.J. Allmendinger in that uh, green car on the inside. It's pretty hard contact on that right front fender of Truex in the 56. It's just it's just such a narrow racetrack that you know they just run out of racing room. Got a lot of asphalt but not much room to race on. Exactly. Very narrow. Darlington Raceway right alongside Highway 151. And the Ramsey's Minnow Pond outside what's now turn four. That's why the track's shaped the way it is. It's kind of egg shaped and it's a tough one. 62 laps complete in the Showtime Southern 500 at Darlington. And our Aflac Do You Know Quack trivia quiz question. How many cautions occurred in last year's Darlington Sprint Cup race? The correct answer is C, 17 caution flags last year. A very special number, isn't it? Yes, sir. It certainly was in 1989 at the Daytona 500. Look at that wall and look at the mess already. That was pristine when we started the race because a crew of eight stayed six hours till four in the morning and used 100 gallons of paint to repair the wall after last night's 147 lap dust up. And it looked all beautiful when we started the race. All for naught. Jeff Gordon is again poised alongside Jamie McMurray for the restart, and we listened in to the 2014. Good race track, dude. You, when I was on the outside of him, I let off. You can't go in there like that. That's why this place is called Too Tough to Tame, Lady in Black. So, uh, you know. No, Matt, but that's, see, he's thinking. He's thinking about how tough his place is. He don't want to make a mental mistake and do something dumb that'll take you out of the race. And he's thinking about that. Ready for the restart. David Stremme. The free pass on this caution. Green flag. McMurray leads him across the stripe and will lead them off into turn one. And here comes that 11 car. Pretty much across the board, Larry. Mike, that 11 car is what everybody said, put your money on. Yeah, Denny Hamlin, of course, he won the Nationwide Series race. Actually sat on the pole and won that race last night. Hamlin now in second behind McMurray. Gordon third. Here comes Jeff Burton. Has a look under Brian Vickers. Thinks better of it. Fourth. Back in sixth, Casey Kane. Seventh, Kurt Busch. Eighth, Ryan Newman. Then Montoya and Kenseth. The top ten. Yeah, Matt Kenseth in that 17 car started back in the 29th position. A lot of his game, we talked about it at the top of the show, was on that pit stop that group made. 13 seconds flat for four tires. Jeff Burton in the 31 moves up for fourth. 
And Casey Kane coming on the inside. Kane's going to grab the spot here as Vickers backs up a bit. Now he may fall victim to the two of Kurt Busch as well. Matt. And Ryan Pemberton's crew chief looking at the video. Everything all right with that front tire? Well, you know, it's not better when it's pushed in. We, we're, not a little, we're a little tight. Certain aerodynamics on it a little bit. Um, but, you know, hopefully we can get a, you know another 15 lap run in here where everybody pits. We can get it fixed here on pit road and, and uh, get her back out front. Ryan, say anything about the track chain taking a big swing as far as what you saw from practice? Yeah, I think so. I think as soon as the sun set, the track started coming to us. We were a little tight there the first 15, 20 laps. And then as soon as the sun went down, we started freeing back up. So we're tight right now, but that's because of the fender. Thanks, Matt. Denny Hamlin hunting the lead as the action is back here. Ryan Newman had a, had a try on the 83 of Vickers. And that brought Montoya right up to Newman. Who's going to lose instead of gain a spot? That's what happens, though. You lose your momentum. If you can't make the pass, you have to lift out of the throttle. Here comes the guy behind you with a full head of steam, and he goes motor right by. Yeah, the straightaways here start about the middle of the corner. Exactly, Larry. You got to carry that momentum off the corner, or else you're going to get passed. There's our points leader, Kevin Harvick, in that 29 car. Started back in the 35th position. He has now cracked the top 15 up to 14th. Kevin Harvick started 35th, has worked his way forward under Green to 14th place. This will not be a blowout like the Yankees' victory over the Red Sox, 14 to 3. The final mark to share three home runs, five RBIs. We want to welcome those of you who were watching the conclusion of the game on FX to Darlington, South Carolina, where Jamie McMurray started on the pole. Jeff Gordon led the first 37 laps. Ryan Vickers went out front for nine circuits and then McMurray back in command although he's had a miracle of Denny Hamlin since this last restart ever since the sun went down we picked up right around a second as far as lap times are concerned fast lap to 2858 right now we're racing at a 2888 so we went from the 29s middle of 29s down into the 28s just by the sun going down in the pre race we heard a little sarcasm from uh, Kyle Busch. Uh, who had to go to the back, not because of the timing of our interview, but because he was in a backup car. He started in back, he didn't stay there long. No, he didn't. He started in the 43rd position in a race car because, remember, he crashed qualifying. So the first laps he turned with this car was when we dropped the green flag. And Dave Rogers, his crew chief, decided on that first caution to go with just two right side tires. And Dick, they're almost about to crack the top 10 sitting in 12. For the majority of the passes, certainly that two tire change was very helpful. But Bush himself has been driving the wheels off that thing. Early on in the night, the car was pushing so bad he was afraid he was going to chew the right front off it. They fixed that problem on the pit stop, and Bush motoring to the front. Don't be surprised to see him lead this thing before the night is over. Well, he passed uh, eight cars by taking two tires, and he's passed four cars since. His, uh, the car that won the race last night, same tires on the nationwide cars we got tonight, went 82 laps on left side tires. Dale Earnhardt Jr., 18th, staying one spot ahead of Martin Truex. Let's check in his pit, Krista. Well, Mike, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has something here at Darlington this year that he didn't have last year. Crew Chief Lance McGrew, this is the last track where the two had worked together. It's all cycle three. It's huge. We come to these tracks with a blank piece of paper. We have to learn what each other needs at each place. Last year, they were terrible. They're set up this